Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today I'm going to tackle one of the Frostgrave soldiers from the second box, which happened to all be female. It's a pretty cool kit, to be perfectly honest. There's a fair few different bodies, heads, weapons, options, and what have you. And with one of those boxes, you've got enough to kick together a Frostgrave warband. Now this miniature in particular comes courtesy of Alan, so hi Alan! <laughs> uh, he has wanted to see me tackle these guys for a little while. And he also mentioned that he's been looking forward to doing some Skyrim themed uh, RPGs and stuff like that. So I thought maybe it would be fun to do something that was in that same vein as far as color schemes went. So I deliberately, I mean, some of you inveterate Skyrim players, <laughs> you might recognize the outfit that this is based on. Uh, fine clothes or whatever it's called. They all look different, don't they? But using that as an inspiration point, I figured let's do something different than the gray and blue that you normally see in these kind of winter themed miniatures and I'm quite pleased with what I've come up with here. Now this is all done using Army Painter products so that's why we've got the little uh, Army Painter logo on the thumbnail there. So if you want to follow along feel free I'm going to list all of the paints in the description below. Um, as ever guys if you've got any questions I will try and help out just drop the old comment there. Let's get into it. I'm going to start off, I've given her a primer spray of Uniform Grey. Uh, I actually found it a little bit difficult to tell whether or not I had primed her afterwards. <laughs> it dries almost exactly the same color as the sprue is, so be aware of that. Now I've got here some tanned flesh, and I'm going to use the Regiment brush for most of this model, I think. There's only a few details where I think I'm going to need a little bit more control. So let's just bop in her face. Uh, there is literally no other exposed skin, which makes perfect sense to me. It's cold. Yeah, we can go right in. If it splashes onto, you know, areas that we're going to paint later, it doesn't really matter. Now I am probably, yeah, I'm going to let that dry, come back and give that a second coat. Now next we're going to quite a large area of color. So I've actually gone up to the monster brush for this one. I find the size of the brush is not normally as important as whether or not it will keep a tip. And for that respect, the Army Painter brushes have actually really surprised me with how well they work. Now I've got that elf green and we're just going to go over all of the clothing. Uh, I'm not particularly worried if I hit any of the areas like the fur trim, for example. The only thing I really need to avoid at this stage is her face. And to be honest, I'm not painting close to that anyway. So we'll go around now and just fill in all of that. And if I need to, I can give a second coat of this anywhere it doesn't quite cover. But to be honest, over the gray, this is going on quite nicely. Now, after turning off that light, that might make that a little easier to see. <laughs> now, what I'm going to do next is to sort of paint up. So I want to go to areas that it doesn't matter if I make a mess. And then every stage after that is going to be clean up. So for example, the way that her clothing is layered, you see here she's got her trousers or breeches, whatever it is she's wearing. Then she's got these sort of two skirts as well. What I'm gonna do is start off by painting her trousers. This is just monster brown. And then if I make any mistakes, you see again, we're gonna paint this fur trim later. We're gonna paint her boots later and both of those layers of clothing. So it doesn't matter if I make a mess here. Um, you know, one of the important things, of course, when you're painting miniatures is your brush control, but I think don't worry too much about being perfect with these base coats. Now, when looking at her clothing, it can be a little difficult in the first couple of times to spot what parts of clothing everything is. You see, she's got these layered sort of skirt areas. She's got a like a toque or something across her head. So what is what? You know, <laughs> I found it a little daunting when first looking at these miniatures. But there are some really cool painted examples online. If you go check out the actual online store where these guys are sold, you're going to see kind of a, a spotter's guide to what parts are which. So I've got here Basilisk Brown, and I'm going to paint the undermost, underskirt, under the lowest level, let's say. And I will paint her sleeves in the same color. Now, remembering as well that there are still you know, I've got these gloves that I'm going to paint later, so I'm just going to paint and not be too fussy because I can fix those if I make any mistakes. And then for that middle layer, I've got here some chaotic red. What I want is 
brown but not quite. And Cardiac Red, I think, works really well for that. So, oh, look at that. That's nice. <laughs> Let's go ahead and pop that on there. And we'll do a little fuzzy under hat thingy as well. Now, luckily, the Army Painter range actually has a bunch of browns. And, you know, <laughs> I like not having to mix up slightly different shades for everything. So I've got here a little bit of oak brown, and I'm going to paint all my wood details. Uh, this is really only the uh, half to the axe here on this miniature. But if you had, you know, any other weapon handles or little daggers or what have you, you might want to do a little bit of oak brown. Now, I'll be honest, I was finding it a little difficult to see what I was doing without the lights on, so we go back to that. <laughs> now, we've painted the wood in oak brown, and now let's stun one another. I'm going to paint the leather in leather brown. So, <laughs> any leather details. This will seem quite light going on, but remember, we are going to shade it. And remember, too, any packs or pouches or what have you on the back, uh, you might want to do these in leather. You might want to do them in cloth or what have you, but... That is up to you. I'm going to do them all the same color just for the expediency of it. She is starting to come together now. That's looking a little bit cooler. Now I've got here, this is gun metal, and we're going to do just the, uh, the handful of metal details on it. There's not very many on this miniature. You may find, of course, that there is more on what you've got. And my paint might be a little bit thick there, so let's thin that down a bit more. Now, I did very quickly go back and just put a little bit of monster brown on these uh, scrolls. You know, paper stuffed into a knapsack there, so magic spells and a double-handed battle axe. She's definitely playing Skyrim. <laughs> and now at last we come to what is undoubtedly one of my favorite colors in the whole Army Painter range, <laughs> which is fur brown. Uh, we're not going to push the boat out too far, we're just going to use fur brown over all of the fur. So. Take your time, because this is really one of the, the finishing stages for your base coats. Now, some folks I've seen do the inside of the cloak in a different color, like they paint the trim and then they paint a different color in here. I'm just going to assume the whole thing is fur lined. All right, so let's go around and carefully fill in all of these fur details. Now we've got all of those base coats applied, she's ready for a shade to bring down some of those colors a little bit and introduce a bit of depth to the miniature. Now you could use strong tone straight from the pot for this, but what we're going to do is actually thin it out a little bit and we're going to use the, what is it called, quick shade wash mixing medium for this. Now this, it actually gave me a bit of a fright the first time I used it, if I'm perfectly honest, because it went out a little bit cloudy and I was thinking, oh no, one, two, three drops of strong tone. And yeah, sorry, blithering a little bit there. But the cloudiness actually disappeared once it dried. So I'm guessing that's just part of how this stuff works. And then one, two, three drops of, <laughs> of mixing medium. One to one has worked pretty well in my experiments with this stuff so far. Uh, you might have a bit of fun uh, trying different combinations. You might see it going, yeah, look, it's it's this weird, cloudy, it doesn't necessarily look the greatest, but trust me on this. What we'll do now is I've loaded up my monster brush, and I don't need a huge amount on the brush. What I'm going to do is cover over the entire miniature with this slightly cloudy strong tone mix. This will take a few minutes and then you want to leave it or oh, give it a good half hour to dry properly and we'll come back and we'll see what we've got once that's finished. You do want to make sure that you are sort of deliberately working it into the recesses so you're not missing any of that nice deep shading. But let's come back and look what we get once that's finished. Now, doesn't that look so much better? <laughs> uh, I'm always really surprised at just how well that strong tone mix really dries. Uh, it's hit all of the recesses while leaving the color intact, but giving us plenty of nice shading. I really love how that turns out, eh? So what I've got now, because of course that fur brown we've used is still quite red. That's not really the finish I want. I've got a little bit of Banshee brown, and I'm going to sort of scrub most of this off 
my brush. I've got one of the, uh, what is this? Dry brushes, a small dry brush. And let's just quickly flick along the edge of the base to see how much paint I'm gonna leave behind. Not very much at all. What I wanna do here is just lightly brush along the edges of some of this fur detail. And instead of it being bright red, we're gonna get instead a slightly fuzzier look to it. Now this can be a little time consuming, I mean, simply to the fact you wanna be quite careful with it if you're gonna dry brush it on. What you might wanna do instead is to get a small brush and just paint in some of these areas, which I might do for some of them. But as you can see, just going over the same area a few times is gonna give me what I want as long as I'm careful. <laughs> so I'm gonna go around now and I'm gonna do this to all of the fur, just a few times over in the same place to build up that color and get that nice transition between deep fuzzy red and the lighter, almost white stuff along the edges. Now some areas you're gonna find it difficult to actually get in with the dry brush. So just grab yourself a smaller brush. I'm still using the regiment brush and we're just kind of tapping paint on rather than stroking it on, you know, as you would normally in straight lines. I'm just booping it <laughs> over and over and sort of Morse code dotting it in some areas. And that's going to give you similar to the dry brush effect, but without having to worry about, you know, splashing over into other areas. So anywhere that you're finding it difficult to get a bigger brush in, just try it. Like for example, on the fur around her cape here, just pep, 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 like that. Now I'm going on down to the character brush here and we'll just do a little bit of brain matter beige over the paper. You don't have to do very much of this. Just don't forget these little details. This is a good off-white color for plenty of things. Then a little bit of barbarian flesh and we'll highlight her skin just across nose, brow, cheekbones. And as always, this is easier when you haven't got a camera in front of you. I cannot seem to get the lighting right today, so you're going to have to trust me, that looks pretty cool. <laughs> I've got here some troll claws, and we're going to use that just to highlight a few little areas of yellow to give that a bit more, a bit more depth and oomph. Now what I've got here is some army green, and I've gone back to my regiment brush. What we're going to do is just pick out a few high points on the model. So along our shoulders, uh, big folds in the cape are a really good one for this. Just pick out, for example, where there's this uh, line between two shaded areas. So add a little bit of army green there to get even more contrast to it. So I'm not going to do the whole cloak in this, but anywhere that I want to just make that color a little more vibrant, stand out a bit, a couple of lines of army green will do the job. And then we can finish off the red in the same way. I've got a little bit of vampire red here, and I'm just going to do the same thing. Just a couple of little lines to draw attention to some of the high points of those. I'm just going to go back to a little bit of monster brown, uh, which we did her trousers in first, and I'm just going to just touch in along her knees. We don't need to go to a much higher color for this. We just really want to bring back some of that contrast. Now just because we can, and I'm having fun now, I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple of dots of corpse pale, just on her face, followed by just a little bit of flesh wash to bring all of those together again. And while that's drying, I've got some mid-brown wash as well, and I'm just gonna go over the leather areas. Very quick coat of that, just to differentiate them a little bit more from the monster brown that we've got. You'll see very quickly adds that little bit more warmth to those leather areas. And then at last, our Frostgrave soldier is complete. What I'm gonna do now is pop a base on her. And I really like how that leather came out. I've just gotta to quickly touch on that because goodness, that was easy. <laughs> now from here, you could do plenty more. You could highlight the green even further. You could do some little highlights on the leather, whatever you wanted to do, but I think for the sake of getting models out there and on the table, whether it be for a role-playing game, 
uh, Frostgrave Ranges of Shadow Deep. I was going to call it Ranges of Middle Earth for a second, but hey, that would lurk, bleh, lurk, work <laughs> for Lord of the Rings models as well. I just cannot get the words out today, guys. I don't know what it is, but I'm really pleased with that, to be honest. And again, that strong tone with a bit of the uh, the quick shade wash medium in there really surprised me. So I invite you guys to give that a shot as well. What I'm going to do now, let's get a quick base on her. And then there she is, ready to take on the forces of evil wherever they might be, whether it's Draugr in the pits or giant spiders somewhere in the shadow deep. <laughs> uh, I've really enjoyed painting this. Uh, I was really looking forward to just having a go with that army painter method again after having had an experiment with a couple of other figures. And yeah, like I cannot stress enough how simple those first few steps are. Um, highlighting and all that is obviously completely optional depending on how you want your figure to come out. But as far as getting something on the table that you can be pretty pleased with, hey, I'm, I'm impressed. I like what I came up with and I think that army painter stuff is pretty handy. So... Feel free as always guys, drop a comment in the old box below. Thank you again to Alan for sending along these figures. This was a lot of fun to do, so choice. And as always guys, my Twitter and Facebook are both linked down there too. So thank you very much for your time and you enjoy the rest of your day.